and we are recording. Recording, excellent. Thank you, John. Okay. Well, when you're ready, go ahead, Chuck. All right. Let me go in present mode. Okay, you guys see my uh, my screen yet? Let me see. Yeah, it's still waiting for my screen. Uh, let me change presenter to, oh, there's two different chucks in here. That might be the problem. Okay, let's try oh, that. Oh, okay. That's all right. There you go. I see. All right. Okay, well, welcome, everybody, to this uh, third week of our, our uh, Forecast Builder Testbed webinar. Um, this one, I promise, will go a lot smoother. I'm doing it from the office, so I'm not trying to keep up with my antiquated uh, uh, landline connection. Um, so, essentially, we've got a, uh, we've got a, uh, brief uh, slideshow put together here for you just to go through the highlights and um, hopefully hit the pertinent things for your uh, for everything that's been going on the past three weeks. Uh, so first of all we want to uh, right off the bat acknowledge that we were making some changes based on uh, forecaster request and and these adjustments and, and this is something that we uh, uh, promise to be responsive to and um, we are, are going to deliver on that promise. So basically um, because of, of the feedback we've been receiving and just the, the, the sound logic to, to what we're trying to accomplish and the overall goal, um, we've decided that and we worked this through the RLC um, to have the ESTF uh, now go through period two for all of central region um, and then that means that the forecast builder and the cron will start at period three. Um, so we are looking for that to be hourly pops and weather through all of period two. However, on the forecast builder, the next update to that will have a feature that automatically combines the same weather. So you can get uh, hourly weather that is just combined at, into blocks where it's all the same, but essentially it's still at the hourly uh, threshold. Um, and the cron will be fixed with the next update to start at period three for the forecast builder. We, we uh, do request that you still use Forecast Builder to, cr to create and update the snow and ice accumulations uh, and also for the testament offices to do that for the weather as well. Um, so essentially you just uh, jump into there and start at uh, step uh, three and work your way through like, like you were doing with uh, the period two otherwise uh, before we made the adjustment to extend ESTF. And because of that, the process there remains the same going through Forecast Builder. We're looking at this update ready uh, in early November, and we're uh, constructing the tech order right now. And as soon as we get all those pieces together, that will be out. Um, also, our plan is to al allow anybody who runs that tech order to go ahead and, and um, make that transition. So you don't have to wait to a certain date to make the transition. If, if the tech order's been to your office and you, you made the changes, go ahead and do that. There might create a little difference because of that, because the uh, um, just because one office might be operating under the, the old tech order versus the new tech order and therefore they, one will cron through period at period two and one won't cron until period three. Um, we're just going to accept some little di differences there for the meantime until everybody gets that tech order and just because this is a pretty important change and, and we want to address the uh, forecaster frustration with what was going on um, with uh, the period two. Okay. Um, so essentially, uh, these are from the last webinar. This is some of the technical issues we are dealing with. Um, this will also be fixed, the six hour long pop grids that were in the period two. This will be fixed um, both with the forthcoming update to the tech word and also now being an ESTF period. Um, we are looking to fix the snow ratio grids, and that was a problem where some of the model data was coming in there as non zero, and um, when the clearly was a situation where you should have zero snow ratio grids. Um, and we have a delayed uh, arrival of the uh, ISC grids um, and so I think we're looking at offset needed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Andy talk about more about this because he's been working a lot of these technical issues with the forecast builder and then the uh, the uh, ISC side and other stuff. So uh, if, you, if you're available Andy go ahead and uh, take take these, these slides, the next few slides if you would. Thanks Chuck. Yeah with regards to these IS, ISC grids, uh, yeah we either a combination of bandwidth um, so we get to the one NWS network, maybe that will that will help resolve this problem, or the function of just so many grids going across that uh, uh, each office's AWIPS maybe can't handle the decode that. We never had this problem with days four through seven because you know, there wasn't as, as many grids, but now that we're starting at period you know, period two, 
in the current in the current setup, there's a lot of you know a lot of traffic. So um, again, I'll be I have a trouble ticket open and likely coordinating with ASM on the matter, but we'll see what happens when we switch to period three. If that um, what happens with the traffic, and this was a good this was something good to find out. Um, you know, since being an NBM demonstration proxy here, that uh, we'll now know what. Hey, if you want to do a long period of initialization or population all at one time, uh, yeah, there's going to be this ISC, ISC thing. So hopefully, um, NCF Raytheon that will be able to address it. Another thing that's important here coming up is the switch to standard time. And so I, I've been working with a couple other ITOs and that to see, you know, trying to like look through the code what's going to happen when we switch, if everything's going to be okay. And what's that? Okay. Uh, and I see that there's going to be uh, there's going to be an issue, uh, primarily for the midnight shift. And so I'm going to send something out, I think, to to email because I don't know that the tech order we can get everybody's tech order in some time. There's just one line that needs a number changed from a zero to a one. Uh, I'll correct the problem. <laughs> So uh, again, it's just for the mid for the midnight shift, and then we'll, the tech order will fully fully resolve it. Um, it was really just something of of running this uh, running this at 5:30 Z instead of like what we used to with the day four through seven for most ops. Is it was running at six 25 Z. I mean, so uh, oh, somebody somebody talking here. Um, I was going to say um, we probably are having a little issue with uh, echoing there. I'm just going to go ahead and mute everybody but yourself. So hold on. All right. Th thanks, John. There we go. All right. Um, also on this slide. Um, you'll see I'll, I've got a link here, and this will be sent out within the tech order. It's also on the CRG Matt NWS chat room. It's a spreadsheet that I've um, developed so that everybody can kind of see what's going into Forecast Builder based on various feedback that we've received, uh, and both what's going in the release and what's currently being under uh, that, that's in development. Uh, Chuck, do you want to just click on the Development Work tab? Down below. Okay. Well, anyway, there's so there's that again. Develop. There's a there's two tabs that you can look through the release I, release items and the development work to see what's uh, what's coming down the line. All right, Chuck, do you want to go back to the presentation? Yeah, did everybody get to see that development page there? Are you still seeing my screen here? Because I did switch to that that development page. Yeah, we thought we see that. But. Okay, excellent. Okay, just yeah, I want to make sure everybody got uh, uh, how we're keeping track of this and some of the changes we've already made, and uh, this is where we'll put new changes in ba based on your feedback. So th this just shows the development process that this, this team and particularly Andy is going through. So let me uh, go ahead and jump back to the presentation here. Looks like it knocked me out of where we were, so I might have to run through a couple slides real quick. Nope, here we are. Okay. Okay. Uh, is everybody on the next page for testbed topics? Uh, Andy, you're going to continue talking about this, right? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. So, so there's a couple other things here for for the starting point issues. Um, for the winds over the lakes, again, I think the idea here is that we're going to use uh, the con consensus raw. Um, Based, um, based on the feedback that's been received from the Great Lakes offices uh, last year, I don't think that's again for just over the again over the marine areas. Uh, kind of related to that um, co coordination with the Lakes offices, the, uh, got the free spray is all set in terms of we'll have a common edit area. Um, there's uh, we're also going to have eventually a common water a common water spot tool, albeit we're going to 
uh, water spout season, but there will be a common water spout tool for that. Uh, Jerry, I don't know if there's anything to say on lake effect pop sky. Um, I think that, I mean, all that stuff is still in you know, smart in it as far as, uh, you know, when I looked last. Yeah, I think there was uh, some confusion early on um, that there was, when we switched over to using the GFS instead of the GFS 20, um, we had lost that computation, but that is back in the smart units now, so um, the, the lake effect pop should be back in there. Uh, for the smoothing, we had that one example that uh, came from Paducah between pop 6 and pop 12. And I haven't really looked into this much. Um, something that's kind of take, taken some precedent a little bit was because of the, which is the next topic, was the gust at, at night. Uh, as uh, I think a lot of you should be aware of was the problem with the Irma uh, that, because it's using the, the wrap and the her is a background field, but both of those had a problem with wind gusts um, being way too high at night and uh, the field that's weighted, I think, a little heavier um, in the Irma, so wing observation wind gusts weren't able, weren't able to tame it down enough, and so Irma is going to get a fix in uh, to help to help that, and that will in, improve both our the super blend as well as the national blend for wind gusts. Uh, until that can get in, um, which is expected sometime later next month, uh, we're put, putting a Band-Aid in. Uh, and we'll leave that band-aid until we can confirm that the Irma, Irma and Superblend adjustments are, are, are working okay. The band-aid, as shown here on the screen, so basically we'll just let the wind gust be the wind speed when the wind speed's less than seven knots, and then uh, average of the wind speed and Superblend gusts between eight and ten knots, and then the Superblend uh, after ten. So at that that one in the middle there is sort of just some kind of a transition uh, between when we when we go between the speed and using super blend. Uh, Chuck, we have a question from uh, Eric Lenning. Uh, go ahead, Eric. Oh, I just had a question uh, about an earlier slide. What did you say about the six-hour pops in period two? Uh, so period, period two, we are, are uh, no long, is no longer going to be touched by the, by the cron anymore. So oh, okay, so it's not going to populate out six-hour pops. Gotcha. All right, thanks. If you choose to use the forecast builder from the drop down menu, that will also provide you with uh, either hourly or three hour pops, depending on how you're set up, because that is using con short data and, and, and short blend data, which is a higher resolution than the super blend data. The real issue there was when we were running the super blend on the cron, it was pulling in the six hour uh, pops from the super blend for period two when it did have higher resolution uh, data available. And so um, running from the drop-down menu will get you that higher resolution uh, data as a starting point. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Well, uh, we'll take a, on this uh, next next slide. I'll show you uh, the impact of that Band-Aid. Um, so this is just, in, again, for our area, using a, <laughs> uh, my office here has become an alpha test site here for things. And uh, so... <laughs> uh, I got to be careful, but anyway. Uh, so on the left is a before image of what Superblend looked like, and this is for uh, time period zero Z Saturday when there's actually some pretty good wind uh, coming through our um, coming through our forecast area. And then after the the application there of that Band-Aid, you can see the definitely drop drop down it should have a topo topography map, but you might be able to kind of see some of the topography that we have here in the valleys kind of decrease there in terms of wind gust speed and, and that that happens in in reality where you can get a better inversion there set up and in the higher terrain areas like at our office we stay gusty. Um, both features are there. So I think it's a you know, pretty good pretty good band aid uh, as far as I'm concerned here. All right and you can continue there uh, Chuck. Okay, um, yeah, continuing on with some of the top forecaster issues. This is what has been seen with the uh, feedback form. So most of the next few slides deal with uh, the feedback we're getting and some of the, the things that are bubbling to the surface and bubbling to the top and some of the things that we are actively trying to address and just some of the other things that we're, we're keeping a track of. So uh, we, we've had some feedback still that there's a collaboration, some 
forecasters complain that it's collaborating on many minor things that, that um, at least in their opinion, doesn't need to be collaborated on or really need adjusting. Um, we really want to focus on the uh, targets of opportunity in places where we, where the, the, the grids that we are, are, are starting with don't necessarily reflect what we want the message, the weather message to be for that, that particular uh, period. So that, those are the kind of things we need to be collaborating on, whether or not you're a, a degree or two off uh, um, or a, a couple uh, um, um, miles per hour off uh, out in day six, day seven, is probably not something to be totally focused on and, and, and wait for and, and spend that energy more on timing issues maybe or uh, uh, significant pop differences or significant uh, temperature uh, uh, issues where or a situation like we're dealing with for a good part of the country right now we're just significantly dry and so the models might be coming in a little too uh, too dry and maybe not going warm enough or, or cold enough at night with a higher uh, diurnal range expected. So those kind of, those kind of uh, situations. Um, and so uh, the, the forecasters, we've had uh, numerous forecasters noting the feedback. They're seeing some, too much minor editing going on. Um, um, also, winds are driving a lot of this. A lot of this, we really need to fix the, those, those winds. And so that's uh, on its way with both the Band-Aid and then the, 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 the true fix is the, the fix to the Irma. Um, also, um, we're seeing a lot of extra work done because of the period two, but that's going to be fixed as well with this update. So we think there should be some significant improvement on uh, some of the, the main issues that, that were really bothering the forecasters with the current process. Um, so just as a reminder, the feedback form is located here. Let me see if I can jump to that. So uh, uh, definitely, if you don't have a link to that, go ahead and go to our VLAB page. Make sure you've got a good link to that. And these, the, the feedback form can be filled out after every shift. Um, I think we've upgraded this, so you can add any general comments. We had a request to do that. Also, I think we have an on, on, NA available, too, if, it, if, if the question does not apply to you. So, um, and really, we're reading all these comments. So even if the, the, you have a comment that doesn't fit in one of these uh, categories, just go ahead and throw it in there. We'll, we'll read it and, and, and take that in consideration. So um, let me jump back to the presentation. I don't know why it keeps dumping out of the presentation. Okay, um, and then, like I said, we are the, this all gets dumped into a huge spreadsheet. So we're going through this the spreadsheet. We see uh, your office as you've uh, filled it out, and I want do want to note what we're doing is is uh, we're going through this. The GMAT's going through this and reading the comments and basically summarizing the comments and, and any issues we have, and we're trying to categorize them. So I've, I've color coded this to different categories of where what things need to be addressed. So we have different categories where winds are a problem, top-down grids a problem, collaboration a problem, uh, and the ESTF uh, period three star is a, a big one too, uh, which is a ESTF or wanting a period three start for the forecast builder. So you see a lot of yellow on the screen was dealing with that, and that's how uh, it became apparent that we needed to make that adjustment and it worked better for forecast to flow to do that. Um, so um, just so you know that we are actively reading these, actively adjusting our, our process for these and, and, and taking it into consideration. So uh, please continue to fill these out and, and um, know that, that we're looking at. And essentially, you want to get our attention. You put down very satisfied or very dissatisfied. I mean, you'll get our attention. We'll really uh, closely look at what we have to say and try to figure out if there's something we can do to, to improve this process to make it work better for you as the forecaster using it. So. Um, um, by all means, uh, continue to throw your, your, your feedback uh, in this form to us. And um, that's probably the standard way of getting to us. But of course, we also have the, uh, we also have the uh, way to get to us on the, the VLAB. We have the, uh, um, which I'll, I'll show later on the VLAB, there's a form that can do it. To, and also the, uh, the email uh, to the nws.forecastbuilder at noaa.gov will get directly to us as well. So th uh, three main ways of getting feedback to us, and um, it's all being considered, all being taken into uh, into account for any updates we might do to the uh, to the process here. Um, so as I mentioned, the miscellaneous comment has been added to the survey. Uh, the NA option then answers the questions based on a forecast request. I'm not sure if we reward this weather question yet, so we'll see if, if that still is causing problems. Um, one thing we are still noticing is we're not getting everybody responding. We'd like to have um, good response. Um, if, if everything's perfect and you really don't even want to express that it's going well, I, I guess you don't need to respond. But we would like to hear that too. So if things really work well, because it all goes into the pot for evaluating how this the process is going. So if, if you are silent on something that really works well for you, it's possible that us not knowing that might lead to that being changed, even though it could be working out well. So all kinds of feedback we, we, we'd love to hear. 
we're also noting that there's limited use of it outside of the test bed. So I don't think it's really been pushed well enough to, that if you're not on the test bed, go ahead and use this form as well. It gets back to us. And really, even if you're not on the test bed, you are sort of testing how the, the, the de now period three forecast builder process does using the light version. So um, by all means, any office, even ones in the mountains, not, not actively using uh, forecast builder prior to uh, day four can go ahead and comment as well. Okay, so we'll continue with some of the uh, feedbacks. Um, now, th this is related to the forecast builder process. I I've, I've uh, categorized some of these. Um, uh, we've had requests for a back button, so I think Andy's going to look into the possibility of putting a back button within in the, the GUI and the, uh, the procedure itself. Also, some would like to see how you can adjust time ranges on the fly rather than staying at the default time range that you select at the beginning. Um, be able to change that if you want to just focus on one or one specific period or a couple periods that where you're adjusting them. Um, also, ideas are maybe you can have some highlights in for the top-down parameters. And uh, one suggestion that I, I just recently read in the feedback form was maybe have different uh, um, color scales, different um, um, image background scales within the actual uh, wet bulb aloft um, grid, where you, then that can indicate uh, clearly and definitively where you might have some uh, mixed. Uh, mixed issues going on, and it might help you uh, quickly identify where um, your mixed preset is coming from as you follow the, the forecast builder process. Uh, we're also actively looking for ways to improve the POT frost grids. Um, one suggestion was to use the, the wet bulb temperature as part of that, so we're, we're looking into that as well. A uh, bigger one right now, I think, and that we've noted it probably more prominently of all the suggestions we've been getting outside of the adjustments to the period two section is uh, POT Thunder. I think everybody really wants to see a more science-based, a more uh, something that incorporates instability, something that incorporates some of the, the data that is available out there. And um, so we're, I do want to mention before I get into the, some of those possibilities is that um, if you are still having trouble using the original tool that's in there. There is training available that some of the new training that Dan provided um, does go through how to use that tool more effectively. I think one of the comments talked about wanting to have just slight chance thunder and have a chance of precipitation during that time frame, and that is pretty easy to do. Those kind of things that are that even some of the traditional weather tools would be able to do, uh, delineate between uh, using the pop grid to delineate where you want thunder to begin and end, you can do that with that tool by proper manipulation of the slider bars. So um, uh, definitely uh, review some of that training and, and if you still have questions just get back to us and we can, uh, I mean it's possible we can even do a full demonstration on one of these webinar uh, presentations, or these weekly or bi-weekly uh, presentations. So, but we are looking at instability parameters to get into this this uh, grid. Also, um, I, I believe Jerry's working on getting a new weather element in the super blend that is that can incorporate that. And, um, I don't know if Jerry, are you unmuted? Or, or is that going to look like it might be available for uh, the next uh, update? A new, you're saying a new um, pot thunder? Super yeah, blend? or something. Yeah, something for thunder for, out of the super blend. Uh, there's a possibility. I, I think right now we were planning on just using um, the MOS probabilities as well as the SPC grids and maybe GLAMP. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's Andy. I've, I've started to, to put some of the super blend probability, uh, not super blend, sorry. Sorry, mm -hmm. put the MOS guide. Um, Six-hour thunderstorm probability. I, I have that. You know, I can add it to the cron immediately, and it will get the the moss in there. Uh, but still, kind of underneath any evaluation <laughs> evaluation phase of that, uh, the grid. Some of the stuff out of the gridded lamp looks much more. Um, uh, how do I say? You know, or optimistic, or something just to look for probably thunder. So. Okay. Well, well, thanks. Yeah. So that's uh, under an uh, overview of what we're looking at to how to improve that. So we're actively investigating that, and, and hopefully uh, one of these updates will have something in there to to jumpstart the uh, POT Thunder grids, and be more a little bit more scientific than than just based on uh, pop. Okay. Uh, we'll also be looking at weather intensity issues, and this uh, comes into play also when it, when we talk about. Uh, 
um, blowing snow as well, for, especially for the northern um, plains. There, there's some different definitions. And then this gets kind of tied into some uh, digital aviation services issues. So that could be a long-term project, uh, getting those all to sync up. But I, I think we will have some agreement uh, shortly of how we should best deal with that, and that will be incorporated into the, the forecast builder process as well. Um, also, we had a request for more uh, different ways to, to distinguish between convective and stratiform options. Um, and, and then it uh, looks like this tech order will provide a default office setting for in that configuration for that. Um, but I think it still tends to be just one or the other for the entire time period. So um, there, we're also looking at ways where you can uh, use edit areas in there and, and, and have different uh, parameters to decide whether or not um, you want convective type weather on one side of, uh, of your domain and, and, and a non-convective or a stratiform on the other side. So then we're looking at options as that as well. Uh, of course, we had requests for easy buttons when you just have simple weather to basically jump you right to the end. And I, I think there's some, some possibility for that. Um, we had feedback seeing a little bit too much sleet, so we'll investigate those and see if we can fine tune what's going on in the background with those to, to uh, get the proper... Uh, um, ratio of sleep to uh, other mixed or non-mixed uh, precipitation out of that. So you get those situations if you take screen captures for us and just provide us feedback and we'll, we'll look uh, deeper into that. Um, Andy, I, I, I don't know if you've been working with Marquette that they were wanting um, um, wet bulb aloft uh, beyond day three. Is, is that uh, something that we're going to provide for them or is that some, some way to configure that? or? Yeah, unfortunately, I haven't had much time to spend on, on that issue, which is, I know we got the stuff, you know, in the winter, but I think, uh, uh, I mean, we're going to keep, I'll keep looking at it once we get through some of these initial <laughs> issues. I'll probably take a, try and like take a closer look at that in November. I'm kind of apologize there. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I do want to mention that, yeah, Andy and Jerry and, and, and others on this team have been really working hard because to make some of these changes that we want to make uh, and do it as quick as possible to keep from frustrating the forecasters, we have been uh, really spinning a lot of plates in the air right now. So, uh, yeah, just bear with us and we'll get to all these concerns and try to address them the best we can, but some higher priority issues right now, particularly that period two adjustment, um, had to take a little bit of precedent in the past couple of weeks. Okay, um, also now go on some of the notes that people are, are seeing off of Superblend. Um, and I, I, this is, I'm going to highlight something that Jerry sent out to, uh, I think, most of the ITOs and SUs throughout the region. Um, so if you're seeing inconsistencies across WFO borders um, um, after you've run the, the Forecast Builder Cron as one, um, the potential um, cause of this could be the use of the previous uh, forecast data in the mix if it was not uh, well collaborated previously, um, possibly missing uh, model data. The Canadian is often the source of this trouble. Um, um, one way to look for that is to check your local verification page on your intranet. Look for cons, moss ingredients. Uh, within the note that Jerry sent out, there are links to this that, that directs you to the right spot to look for those. Uh, and then if you see any problems within that, if you're seeing any missing data, and you can also compare that with what your neighbors has as well if you can get onto their uh, cons, moss ingredients page. I know we had a problem here at Jackson where we weren't matching up too well with Louisville and discovered that we were missing, I think it was the Moss Guide Sky. And so until we got that fixed, uh, we were having trouble matching up. And, and once that got fixed, everything went a lot smoother. So, uh, but if you do see any problems with that that, that um, you can't quickly fix yourself, just give us a, a, a note uh, via that NWS forecast bill at NOAA.gov uh, email address. Also, the W model could cause some issues, so uh, it has its own ingredients page in the same location. Um, and then um, also WPC guide could have been missed as well. Um, other issues we, we're dealing with is sometimes we see the total failure of the current super blend run. Um, I think that's less of a problem now that we've worked on the PX balancing issues. I think that was causing some serious problems for, for many offices, but I think we've gotten that mostly taken care of. Um, there is still a potential that if uh, a component of the super blend gets an error, and it will cause a super blend not run. And um, we do see a baseline AWITS problem that can make this a rare uh, but non-zero possibility. Um, there is a DR out on that, and, and we're working to uh, mitigate that as best as possible. So um, just know it, it, it is possible that sometimes you will have some super blend run issues um, because of that, but um, hopefully we'll get that fixed uh, quickly as well. And it, it's, it's just interesting that it takes efforts like this to somehow dig out um, some problems that uh, might be very deep in the baseline of uh, BayWorks itself. Okay. Um, 
yeah, just uh, some quick forecast reminders. Uh, for ESTF updates, the forecast uh, builder is strongly recommended. It, it's designed to be used that way. It, it works that way. It will use the highest uh, highest resolution data that's available um, for that time period. It can also do what uh, Data Load and Blend does and, and more. Um, you definitely remember to collaborate, try to keep things as seamless as possible. And please do not edit your snow amount, ice accumulation, or weather grids directly, um, especially for those test bed offices uh, dealing with the weather grids, because we, we're, we're testing the process out, so we need to know what uh, issues might be coming up trying to work through this, this methodology and, and see where we can, uh, can fix it. So uh, to do that, changes should be made and co collaborate on the foundation grids, the, the temperature grids, the QPF grids, snow ratio grids, and that area, some of the top-down grids to, to get out the, the, the values you'd prefer to see. If that fails and you cannot do that and you find you need yourself to edit, um, again, please try not to if possible. Um, but let us know if you're running into issues with that through the feedback form. Maybe we can address specifically what might be going on at your office. Um, also, we'll mention the new training items have been added to your LMS for Phase 3. That includes, uh, um, as I know before, the, uh, the POT Thunder training, so you can get into that and, and get a little more uh, um, examples of that, a little, little uh, see, some, see that in operation. And also, there's a Westlake uh, case that, that's been included that we uh, use the practice database for. So uh, talk to your Sue about that if you want to see if you can get that set up and, and, and give that a try because we're heading into to the win more into the winter weather. And um, going through that West case, it's pretty a complex weather situation, and that would, uh, that would, would, would definitely help you see what, what's going on um, and how Forecast Builder works in that kind of situation as well. Okay, I think this is the last slide, so uh, just remind you, forecast uh, feedback strongly encouraged, um, and your feedback is definitely shaping how we're doing using Forecast Builder, and because of that, it, it should make for a, a better uh, end process with the MBM um, delivery mechanism. Um, so visit our VLAB site. We keep updating stuff on there. We're putting more, more things on there. I just recently uh, updated the ESTF uh, documentation because... Um, now that we're extended ESTF to period two, that need to be updated and corrected for that. A lot of that hadn't been touched for two or three years, so it's good to have that freshened up. Um, and again, you can meet, email us at that directly. You can use the feedback form, and um, full documentation is also available off of uh, that link there and off of the, uh, the VLAB site as well. So that is all for the slideshow, and I think we're ready for open questions. Um, do um, Andy, is there anything you want to say, or Jerry, do you want to say before we go right to open questions? Yeah, uh, just Andy. I think I think we're good. Um, yeah, I mean, I I just want to kind of tell everyone again to check that spreadsheet out um, from what's going into you know because there are definitely things that we we that have been new things that added in that that haven't been covered in here in this uh, presentation. So. Okay, if you do have a question, you can either uh, raise your hand through the software or uh, actually type it in through the uh, questions um, and answers. And I know all the Sues will be very familiar with that since we use it a fair amount. Uh, if need be, you can also just put it into the chat and we'll ask the questions for you. Well, that's pretty good. You guys are geniuses. Yeah, I doubt that. Um, <laughs> oh, here we go. I mean, we, we got one. <laughs> yeah, we got a half hour. So, if anybody wants to chat about different ways of using it or and any ideas, we're, we're well, out here ready to. We actually uh, have a question from uh, John in uh, North Platte. Um, let's see. John, you'll have to enter your uh, audio pin. or type it in either one. Okay, well he did have a question so we'll just wait a moment on that. See if that comes through. Oh yeah, go ahead John. I see you're unmuted now. Okay. We've noticed here um, over about the last 
well, really the last couple, three weeks, that the overnight low temperatures have been running about about five to eight degrees, too warm based off of uh, based off of what what kind of the reality of the odds are for the next, you know, if it runs for like tomorrow night, you know, it's usually about five to eight degrees too warm. Is, have, has anybody else noticed that, or is there any way maybe at least in the short term to get some of that higher, like maybe the Met or the Map? That's been doing a lot better here than, than Super Blend, at least in the short term. And I did put something into the feedback form today about that. I don't know. Can, is, are they not hearing me? Yeah, we, no, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we got you, John. Yeah, yeah, that's Annie. The the super the the super blend itself. That if you're just you know, are you just based off what you're seeing coming out of the, the when the cron runs? What's getting populated yeah. initially? Yeah, it's the initial uh, population. Yeah. And yeah, I mean the is, super blend itself has got components. I mean the adjusted MAV and adjusted MAV met the bi their bias corrections are in there. Uh, I'm trying to think what the total weighting would be of those adjusted databases as well as the MOS. Um, and that seems to be maybe what the problem is. I was kind of monkeying around with some of the bias corrected stuff, and that seems to be way too warm right now. And it seems like maybe it's incorporating, like you say, maybe it has that in there. And now maybe that could change. It may be just the way the lows were over the last month or so that it's looking at. I, I don't know. but Yeah. The bias correction stuff, definitely this time of year, um, because we're in this transitional time period, and you know we're we're not having a real uniform style of max T min T's that you would get during the mid winter and mid summer time frame. So the bias corrections will sort of struggle at this time, and I'm guessing you're seeing them too high um, because you know we're getting cooler right now, and the 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 bias was probably just a little bit off, but it is only a 30-day training sample, so I would anticipate, you know, by November they will start evening out a little bit better. Okay, we'll watch that. Yeah, I mean, there, there, it is too high. For instance, you know, here at just North Platte, we had I think it was 41, is what uh, what the forecast was for the next night. In reality, we got down to 32. And, I mean, and that's just that's that's just kind of too big of an error to to not go in and try to, you know, at least fix that a little bit. Right, yeah. Um, there is, you know, there's been lots of discussion between the consistency team as well as the, the grid methodology team about avenues that we can use to try to help forecasters tune in on to um, cases where it does make sense to make these edits. Um, you know, and w one of those avenues is maybe looking at like a spread information, max and min. Um, so if you're getting a lot of models that might be saying low and a lot of models that might be saying high, um, you know, you could be getting that average and, and if some of the higher models are way too high, then obviously it's going to drift the super bund higher. Um, so that's one of the avenues we are looking at. I've actually introduced something into Con Short um, that I'm, I'm contemplating introducing into the longer term um, blends where I, I look at a standard deviation, um, and if it's uh, above, I actually do two standard deviations, usually it's three, but if, if it's above or below those the two standard deviations, I actually throw it out of the blend. Um, it seems to be helping a little bit in the con short, which is why I'm contemplating doing that um, in, in the longer term blends, uh, but we'll see. I, I'm gonna verify it here for another a uh, few weeks, so it's certainly not going to get into this next build with the longer term stuff, but it may get into a, a, a later build. Oh, that's fine. Just to uh, appreciate you kind of being aware of it. I, I mean, I figured you guys were, but uh, that's just kind of what we're what we're seeing here. You know, kind of almost too much to where you can't. I mean, you just know that it's going to be colder than what it's showing. I mean, it's just really hard to to not to not do something about it. Yeah, and I'm curious. Have you looked at um, what the national blend is saying? Because I mean, our, our, our main objective is to sort of transition into using the national blend. Um, I've been sort of told to keep the development on some of these longer term, you know, change longer term changes with the, the our regional blends at a minimum. I mean, if there's a big problem, I can change it. Um, but um, I was just curious if you've looked at the national blend. 
No, not not really, but maybe I mean I might start loading it in just to just to compare the two, and then I mean I can always just flip it back to to what what it's supposed to be with the super blend. But yeah, that's a I could I could certainly do that. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah, and I do know that there there's going to be an update to the national blend here in I believe a month or so, um, where they're going to go to their version I think 2.1, and that version um, is a, a a good bit better than what the current version is. So right. I'm looking forward to seeing that version. We actually do have it here experimentally at MKX. Um, if most offices may actually have it, um, but might not be loading it via LDM. So if you are familiar with the data add-ons manager, um, there's uh, the MDM experimental EXP. If you load that with the data add-ons manager, you should be able to um, get a look at what the experimental national blend is. Okay, well, thanks. I just uh, just kind of wanted to make you guys uh, aware of it. Appreciate you checking into it. So, thank you. Yep. yep. Okay, we have a question from Nick out in Great Falls. Uh, go ahead, Nick. Oh, so, I Nick? guess I was wondering, we're not on the, using the forecast builder on yet because we're just testing everything in the practice database. But when I run the forecast builder, with the latest version, it'll do the top down grids all the way down to day eight if I choose to create them. But it seems like we get a lot of precip type issues because looking, you know, beyond what's the NAM and the rep fallout, then we're just using the GFS to determine the precip type, but we're using a blend to create or pop. I know if there was a way that maybe that can be limited choose how far yeah, yeah next this Andy yeah the uh, uh, next uh, this next tech order that's coming out or the next update for forecast builder will uh, will it will actually uh, it will actually throw up and uh, throw up a message to you if you really want uh, top down grids out in the out in days four through, you know days four through seven because yeah like you say you know you may not want all those feet types uh, out there all you may want is just rain snow and okay great yeah thank you for answering that uh, going back quickly to John's comment I, you know and related to the email that Jerry sent out uh, t I, I actually think it might be worth for everybody to take a look at their consmos ingredients page because um, that will help you to figure out what's going in your super blend and I happen to notice clicking around that some of the consmos pages <laughs> don't have data or may have partial data in there um, and there's a uh, I, it might be an issue with uh, I'm trying to think because there's a, you know, a script to copy the files over to your local local Linux server, and then there's also a file um, uh, another script to to produce those produce those pages in general. So uh, yeah, just take a look at your Consmos ingredients page. Make sure everything's working okay there. Yeah, I was going to suggest that too. That that page was developed um, actually by Mark Mitchell way back when we did the um, extended process and he did another modification to allow the new version of the blending procedure to run correctly using that um, and that was actually part of the CR16-021 tech note to update that so if you if you do go to that Cosmos ingredients page and you see that it's not functioning it's possible that your um, your PHP web page didn't get updated um, another point of failure there would be, like Andy said, there's an SCP process um, that copies those log files into um, the, the appropriate location. So you need to, I guess you'd need to check to see if those log files are getting there, and if not, then um, you know you can always contact me, and uh, I, I can help try to solve that problem too. But that page is a good page to see quickly. Um, all of the models that are going in at the different um, periods and you should be able to see all your neighbors as well and you know so if you're seeing things aren't lining up then you should easily be able to um, determine why and then of course from there we can troubleshoot it well thanks and now uh, we have a question from Marquette yeah, hi there, guys. Um, a couple of things we're dealing with up here is the the 
day four through seven period where you're talking about needing the, the max temple or wet bulb temple loft out there. We're not really so much in need of that as more of just something to discriminate the precip um, other than just the surface temperature, which is what it uses now. Um, and so I, it'd be nice to do something like like we talked about in that last uh, last call, like a thickness based approach or something other than um, other than just that max wet bulb temple loft, which we don't have the GFS for. Yeah, that's right. That's right there, Justin. Just had to kind of get a <laughs> memory refresher with everything that's been getting thrown here. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the, the surface temperature is all you know, it's all right. It's something sometimes great, just first start. But yeah, I mean, if you wanted to get anything beyond the rain snow, or if you wanted to kind of throw uncertainty on rain snow, I mean, ways to do it, I guess. Like I say, like I know you guys like the wet bulb, wet bulb zero is another option. I think that wet bulb zero would be more utilitarian in the shorter term, you know, like day one through three or something. But and there's been as... there's been talk about yeah the idea of you know, snow level two, um, uh, snow level wet bulb zero something like that. I feel like in in time that something has that that thirty four thirty seven is go away at some point here, be replaced probably with a grid, be better. So yeah, we'll keep we'll keep, we'll keep uh, working on that. Uh, what okay. we want to do with the extended there, gotcha. and yeah, yeah you may not you. want to use your top downs. And then the other, other only other issue we're kind of looking at as far as a bigger picture thing right now is um, the diurnal tool. I know I've been chatting a little bit with you guys about that, um, where we're having issues where the, the maximum and minimum temperatures are within a few degrees. Um, it's actually causing quite a few problems with the diurnal trend. And I, I talked to the developers of the NWS diurnal tool that's used in there, and they said that they can't fix that. Although I'll say that we have a tool that we run that's a diurnal tool that you can run off any model, and uh, it works just fine. So maybe that's something we could replace it with. Yeah, feel free to pass us that code. We can take a look at it. Okay. You know, yeah, we'll send it to Andy or I. Okay. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you. And do we have anybody else? Any questions? Okay. Well, I'll keep watching for a moment here. Do you have any last comments you'd like to make before we close? Chuck or uh, John. Mary or Andy? Yeah. yeah, John, this is a Chuck. Yes, sir. I want to go ahead and I had it on the screen a little bit. I don't know if everybody saw that, but I had it on, my, on the screen um, something that the consistency team is working on. Uh, we kind of work hand-in-hand -hand with the consistency team um, to um, try to make sure that our project's going pretty smoothly and is in line with what their goals are overall as, as part of, of, of that uh, subgroup out of uh, SSD. Um, and so they're working up on a... On a uh, uh, documentation here and just some guidance for uh, forecasting in the forecast builder error. So just want to let everybody know that this is coming down the pike. They're working on that. We're contributing to this and um, um, th th this is just our two teams working together. But as part of this, we're also trying to identify uh, targets of opportunity and some suggestions of where we should need to be looking at for targets of opportunity and we even have stuff talking about uh, uh, forecast uh, variability based on statistics and see if we got standard deviations beyond that and maybe alerts you where there might be a, an opportunity to, to make a uh, make some improvement on the uh, common starting point. So um, we're actively uh, contributing to this and um, the feedback we're getting from those uh, forums and everywhere else is getting into this uh, this conversation. So um, just look for more guidance to come out basically along that line as well. Um, it, it's just being vetted and uh, collected right now, but um, that, that's one of the ongoing projects across the area. Okay, uh, last chance for any call. Oh, uh, looks like uh, Eric, you have a question from uh, Romeoville. Yeah, this is a, a question related to training and the, the job sheets. Um, the uh, I'm actually at home teleworking, but a forecaster is asking about the um, 
instructions that say that you are able to start up the Forecast Builder Winter West case uh, from a from the AWIP startup menu. Is that something that our ITO or AWIP's focal point needs to install on the menu, or is there another way to start that up? And there, with the uh, West with the uh, West stuff, there was a, a sheet of like I think pre of like pre or like install instructions, if you will, um, and in there contains some code for that you can add to your so that you can add that to your AO startup menu. Okay, I'll. Uh, I see the screen there that you're showing. The installation stuff. Okay, I'll uh, check and verify that that was done. Thanks. Um, Eric. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Okay, great. And, uh, you know, just keep on sending the information in and as you see things. Um, and I know <laughs> they're, they're working really hard on this and we really do appreciate all the participation that we have. And uh, it's been been really great to see. Okay, well, um, if nobody has any last minute comments, questions? John, this is Andy. Oh, oh. I'm going to bring this up because I saw a chat come across uh, in my Google about that the Irma apparently might be having some uh, issues too with just what, like their like the min, like the Irma's min temperature or regular temperature grids. Uh, certainly, if you, I, I think, uh, I think Jeff Griffin may have sent it out in a note that if you notice any problems with the Irma, please send them to that a, that AOR RTMA info list um, because that not only impacts Superland but it impacts National Blend as you know as well. So, you know, it's, and it's a great way to get problems resolved in both places, just like what we're doing with wind gusts. Yeah, there was a question I, I saw some traffic on, too, about um, the uh, winds over the Great Lakes. Have we have there any changes been made, or are we still – I know yeah, there was one, some question. Yeah, that one that works, too, to use, like, the con, cons raw over the marine area. Mm -hmm. that, that's our solution, but there is a problem in the, with the Irma over the Great Lakes. Um, right, right. I believe – um, Greg Mann may have um, an idea of what's going on with that. Um, Greg, are you on the call? I thought I saw your name. Uh, he, he might have been here, but I don't see him right now. Okay. Well, um, I, I believe that there is some work being done. Um, I think it has to do with where they're pulling their analysis um, they being the RTMA folks, where they're pulling the analysis scheme from um, over the lakes. And I think that they're using some outdated material. Um, so I believe that there's going to be some work done on that. I'm not exactly sure as to when we will get that, um, but that should make an improvement when, it, when, they, when they do fix it. Um, it's probably quite a ways out, though, is my guess. So I think that's why we went with the determination of using the the raw, the cons raw, because it has no bias correction influence um, over the lakes. Okay, so just make sure that that that's actually in the current um, package that's out there. No, that it's going to be in our upcoming tech note. Okay, um, Andy that's and what I, I mean. are feverishly yeah. working on it. Okay, um, it's going to include. Um, and the tech notes scope is similar to other tech notes in that it includes some of the aviation stuff that we're working on too um, to try to improve some of that. Um, Central Region is doing a lot because we have this DAS initiative as well. So we're trying, since a lot of these codes are overlapping, we're trying to do an update that includes a lot of that stuff as well. So the, the tech note we're hoping to have tested by the 10 test bed offices next week. Um, which means Andy and I have a lot of work to do in the next few days. Um, and then from there, we're hoping to get it released to the rest of the region um, the following week. And then it won't be due until probably after the um, 
either after or just before the Christmas moratorium. Okay. Oh, we do have a question now from uh, Gene Brusky in Green Bay. Go ahead, Gene. Uh, Jerry just answered it. I was uh, going to ask about when the next tech order was coming out for the builder upgrade. Okay. Well, that was easy. <laughs> and there will be a lot of a lot of little updates to the cons blend a routine. That, like Chuck was mentioning, there's this baseline issue, and I've done a lot of little updates to try to mitigate the issue. It won't completely fix it. Um, but it should greatly reduce the amount of missing blends um, from from the databases. And there's other little fixes that I've done. I've, I, an office pointed out that um, it was right around the day three time frame that their pops didn't look quite right. And I real, found a little bug in the code that um, it was including uh, hourly NAM nest pops. Um, and there was only like one or two of them available. There wasn't actually six pop hours available, and the same can be said for QPF. So I've introduced some coding logic to prevent it using um, that data unless it's all there. Um, so that, that's one of the sort of baseline fixes that should help with that. It would also impact like the HRR and thing, other items that may stop in between a six-hour period. Um, so. That's one of the fixes. There's also going to be in this some fixes to the or some additions. Uh, offices will all start seeing hourly high-res ARW data. Um, that's mostly a short-term um, improvement, and they will also get a new model called the GFS One Hour, um, and that will it's the exact same model GFS model except it'll have hourly data. Um, so that's another uh, good improvement for short-term grid um, edits, and then. They're, the Canadians will be changing. Um, they were, we're going to be getting an updated Canadian model. You'll see the, it'll be the same model, um, but it'll be two updated models. Uh, it's higher resolution, um, and we're hoping that that should improve some of our um, some of our long-term and short-term grids. Well, sounds great. <laughs> Busy, 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 that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks again, everyone, for uh, joining us. Um, oh, I think I, wow, look at this. I thought we were almost done. And actually, Brian Hirsch has something to add. Go ahead, Brian. Uh-oh. Uh, I didn't uh, <laughs> intend to take too much of anyone's time. Uh, while, uh, while Jerry was discussing um, uh, the forecast builder update, and um, and its DAS inclusion. Uh, I guess I just wanted to uh, know if uh, uh, Jerry, how many additional offices outside of Central Region have adopted um, either Forecaster Builder or the or the DAS, and then how are we reaching them to let them know of these um, uh, of these changes? Um, I don't know the exact number. I know that there are a good number of sites that. Our border sites, so they border the our regional boundaries. Um, I know RLX is one of them, and then we have there's this the um, Montana test bed area um, that they've been testing a lot of forecast builder as well as DAS and doing ESTF updates and that kind of thing. Um, so I, I I can't give you the exact number, Brian. Okay. Um, uh, any idea how we reach how we best make sure that uh, uh, that when we when we change and and fix things and 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 get new information out there that we're best communicating with them. It's a good question. I mean, one of the ways whenever whenever Andy and I send an update, um, you know, our region gets tech notes, and I believe other regions can see those tech notes. Um, the other the other way is the software collaboration portal we have. Forecast Builder is part of CRGFE Tools, and if the site has registered for CRGFE Tools as well as um, they watch it, then they would get an email notification that it has been updated. Um, and then within that, they could look at the website and see what all has been updated. Um, so that that's generally how a lot of sites can get updates. Even our own Central Region sites can see updates that way because um, they've all we've had. Part of the tech note is to register and watch 
those um, repositories. So uh, that would be one way, but as far as direct communication, I guess we would need to get an idea for who all is using this stuff. Um, I know that they're part of VLAB. That's another way with a forecast builder. Um, so there's lots of little ways, but no, I think, direct way. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Southern region. Yeah, go go ahead, JJ. We have a, you have a I question. Just to, to, yes, I just wanted to jump in on a comment there to, uh, to provide a little um, information. So there is a, a national team, a national uh, blend of models demonstration team uh, that was um, looking at ways of expanding the central region demonstration to other regions. Uh, currently, that's in national negotiations, so I can't really comment on, on any of the statuses, but what I can say is if uh, and, and hopefully when this uh, demonstration is expanded to other regions, uh, I believe the demonstration team will be a key cog in that uh, communications channel and they, they have some various plans that would help foster a lot of that communication to make sure you know a, a southern region office would be aware of any changes and things like that. So there are, there are some other things in development that would help uh, if and when we can expand that demonstration elsewhere. Okay, thanks, JJ. And uh, let's see, Jim Clark, you've got a question? I didn't have a question for today. I was just uh, wanted to let you know that we are running the live version here, and we gave the forecasters the option to run the full version and test it so we can take a look and see how uh, top-down would work in the mountains. Okay, thanks. Okay, well, we've uh, kind of run our course for the hour, so um, thanks everyone for joining us, and thanks again to uh, you know Chuck and Jerry and Andy and the entire team that's been working on this. Um, doing some great work here, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.